This week on Poppin' Comics, welcome to This Week in Comics. We're going to do a little bit of a structure change here. We're going to have uh, comics and TV movies, and the last one would be Destiny 2 this week. So if you're listening to this, we have three separate podcasts this week. Oh, uh, snap. This way, if you want to listen to a specific subject, you can pick which one instead of having to listen to the entire thing. So this one is comics. And this week we are talking about Clean Clean Room. First off, I totally (laughs) got Chubb. For Gail Simone. <laughs> I don't know that she quite um, meets my Marguerite Bennett, <laughs> but... She will be at Megacon. I know, and I'm totally going to meet her because this book was amazing. There are actually... Uh, so we read Clean Room uh, Volume 1. It's a... Uh, what is it? Immaculate Conception. Oh. It's one through six because this is a series that is still running. Yes. Um, I believe... <laughs> Book two is already out for the trade, and three is coming out shortly, if I remember correctly. Let me look at my notes here. Um, July 18th for the third trade. There is two trades out currently, and you can, if you're watching the video, you can see the cover. Lena is modeling it, Vanna White style. Uh, Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the the, the review for this first, and then we'll kind of talk about some comic book news at the end and our picks of the week. Um, So starting out, like I said, this is Clean Room Volume 1, Immaculate Conception. It's written by Gail Simone, art by John Davis Hunt, published by Vertigo. And like we said, there's two trades out currently, and the third is coming out on July 18th. And it is a currently running series for Vertigo. So it it does come out monthly if you want to read it in that form. Um, But on this section, we're going to do trade reviews because it sounds like fun. Because. So yeah, you can go ahead and read the back of it since you flipped it over because that's what I did for the summary. So this kind of gives us a feel for what the story is about. Okay, so somewhere between the realm of self-help and religion lies the Honest World Foundation. Its creator started out as an obscure writer of disposable horror fiction who decided to change the world one mind at a time. Now it adheres... Adhere... (laughs) Now its adherent rule Hollywood while (laughs) obeying their leader's every command. First off... I do want to say, very <laughs> confusing. Like when I first started reading yes. it, mind you, I woke up with a pounding headache this morning and I just read it this morning because I was so busy the last few days at work because there's multiple jobs. But um, I'm reading this and I'm like, what am I reading? Oh, yeah. no, Because I, you really don't know what you're reading until like halfway through. Mm-hmm. So like to read this issue by issue, I'd have been like, I got to be honest, I, I don't know how I would have felt issue for issue. Yeah. Because as a trade, this really develops a story. Like, mm-hmm. so um, the main character, uh, I don't know how, how deep we want to go into the story. Oh, no, line. this is so, so if you're listening, this is going to be full spoilers. This yeah. comic has been out for a very long time. Yeah. I have so, confidence that if you haven't read it, you're going to read it after this just because it's so good. It sounds, you know. But uh, we're going to go through spoilers and, you know, I mean, it's, it is what it is. But we, we can't really talk about it too much without spoilers, I think. Right. So. Um, so the two big characters are Chloe and Astrid. Uh, and it starts with Astrid as a child. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, which, you know, again, so it was kind of confusing because I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, I love it because she's like, you know, where's daddy? And they're like, daddy's right here. Why are there snakes, snakes on his face? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, and then like black right. page and you're like, huh? And then you flip over, you know, into like today. Yeah. And uh, this is uh this is definitely a trade that, like you said, where you read through it and thank God it's in a trade because otherwise I'd have been lost in issues. Oh, yeah. But when you get halfway through, you start understanding what's going on. And then for me, I've read it twice now because I had to read it a second time because I just wanted to. I think I will again without Once, my pounding head. <laughs> yeah once i set it down the first time after i finished it like for the next 30 minutes like just stuff was like a uh-huh in my head yeah yeah it was i'm like still chewing on it coming yeah. through and i'm like oh and then and it kind of like it started hitting you um but it is it's a good trade it's just deep it, it, is, it deep. is very deep um uh, my husband loved it which like when he came out or I came into the bedroom, one of the two, and he had put it down, and he was like, you got to read this. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, when I got that message, I was like, oh, we found something you like. Well, yeah, yeah it's it's twisted, and, and like, I, I am a sucker for, like, the gods and evils thing. You know, I, I spent a very long, and I'm not going to get too far into this, but I spent a very long time 
being uber uber religious and studying the Bible and like I was a fucking Jesus freak for a while. And um, so I, I get turned on by that, which is why I started watching Supernatural with her was because of the whole demon and angel thing. Like yeah. I, I get off on that shit. And that I think that I think that that's what this is. I think that this is going to be a battle of like prisoner demons trying to just eradicate human. So yeah. So on that point, you asked me when we were talking about it earlier if I thought it was like <coughs> demons that these things were. After reading it a second time, hundred percent. Well, yeah, I it completely says, think it that's says what they that are. that they're imprisoned. Yeah, we are so inmates. I, th- I think they're they're the worst of the worst. Yeah. And yeah. like, I think this is going to be one of those things where like, and I don't think they'll actually get into it, but. You know, you have different tiers of demons, and there's some that, you know, make Satan look like a bitch. And, like, yeah. that could be some of these people, you know what I mean? And, like, and and the reason I say that also is because the the one um, the one that calls her Clem Clam Clo. Yeah. What was his name? Uh, uh, Sparks. Sparks. Yeah. Um, he was exercised, and they got through the book of Corinthians before he, he left, and now he's compassionate. And it, for those of you that don't know the Bible, Corinthians is Paul's love letters to the people of Corinthian, yeah, Corinth or Corinth or whatever the, the town was. Um, so the fact that he has compassion and love, being that that's when he was exercised, just makes me really feel like he was the worst of the worst. And now, I think that's where this is going. No, that, that, I love it. That's cool because like stuff like that. Like I, I've, I used to be religious myself. I didn't know that much about the Bible and the Corinthians. So it's cool to see that insight. I didn't catch that. Yeah. So and that's you know awesome for you to things. share that too because no, cool. I I'm yeah. I don't Bible. So that's, that's why that's why people don't want to argue with religion with me. Yeah, no, no, and that so. makes complete sense now that you say it. Like that's he is the worst of the worst. It is funny when he um when he inhabits the neighbor's body. Oh yeah. my god! Oh. Yeah, meat <laughs> suit. You know, you know exactly what I thought of was Men in Black. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> meat suit when he had it on. He was just waiting for the roach to like pull off the meat suit. Um, uh, their neighbors are. Like the fucking nicest people in the world. On yeah. a side note, and I don't know if they're gonna turn out to southern. be like some sort of angel. It's just it's a southern, southern thing. hospitality. So like in this, that's the way it is. Well, in like I know it is, south. but like feel... in the story, we have demons, and we don't have the other side of the coin yet. Right? Yeah, and I, so, I'm wondering I'm... if they're some sort of yeah, because she other flat side. out like when she came home from you know Astrid was like, you guys really need to stop for your own safety, and they're like, we won't. Yeah. We're your neighbor. Like, you're our neighbor. And I'm like, all right, you guys just got your asses kicked. And they weren't like, they didn't seem all that scared that a demon just like right. beat the shit well, out of them. If which that was, right. like, if that was really the weird. case and they were the other side, they wouldn't have been able to be possessed. Well, one of them, yeah. But but what about the dude you're saying? Like, he's like the biggest and baddest ass. Well, yeah. But I mean, if there is an angel entity in there, you you know, demon True. can't yeah. possess an angel like that. Wouldn't, no, yeah. they would, there'd be a, a huge struggle on the inside. Maybe that's why his body was all contorted. Yeah, because when they when they were possessed. So like, that's the other thing. So the clean room, the whole story is called clean room. And we see the clean room and it's kind of like a um, almost like an exorcism area. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it's like a um, oh, what is that where they uh, oh, man. I'm just I can't brain today. Um, that happens a lot, actually. I know the, where they put you into oh, like an isolation chamber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it's an isolation chamber, but like clean, like you know. Yeah. So like in the um, like they had to def- bathe uh, and like sensory so depri- yeah, uh, sensory deprivation. Yeah. So um, and so they you know when they show Chloe and let me just state real quick because we've read this and you guys are listening to us. Chloe initially after you see Astrid run over as a child, it then jumps to Chloe who's the next main character, um, she tries to commit suicide. She's then saved, and but in dying can now see kind of the demons that are around. Yeah. I think so, it's like one of those things where she has like a new power and she just doesn't know how to control right. it. Right. So it, it, it blips in and out. So, you know, she at the one point. The demons are fucking dirty as shit. Yeah. Oh, they, I mean, so like good. super, like super raunchy. Like yeah. it, this is very like sex oriented as well. Like, oh, yeah. What did you guys think of the labial and, piercing that they removed? Right. Yeah. They just I, removed it. As soon as I saw I, that, I'm like, all right, this comic is going to yeah. go dirty quick. I, yeah. I saw that. I'm like, Sean, you got to read this. Sean, yeah. he, you know, the body piercer. And he's like, Freaking, read this, read this. <laughs> with a cat. Captive bead ring. Yeah. No, okay. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yeah, well I saw played. that. I'm like, oh, all right, whatever. But um, so Chloe uh, wants to confront Astrid because ultimately the reason that she tried to commit suicide is that her boyfriend read Astrid's Peter? book, Philip. 
Philip. That yes. Was, that was um, read read Astrid's book and then got to like the fifth level, which you realize at the end, which I was like, holy shit, what's on that? Well, yeah. Anyways. And it so fucking trails out. God he, damn it. I yeah, know I know. Rest. So <laughs> he kills himself. And that's why she tries to commit suicide. And when she kind of comes to like, you see her and I like the thought boxes, you know, which like, so you're getting the, the reading boxes of like everybody's um, verbal yeah. and then you get black boxes where it's you it's, it's always her thoughts, her thoughts. Yeah. so you know and then she looks over and boom there's her boyfriend with half his head blown off yep. and boink right back into the the, yeah. <laughs> the and, change and she mind, goes mind you this is like what the first or second issue yeah like you have no clue what the fuck's going on yeah so and all of a sudden she sees her boyfriend like half a face missing that's and you're why like, yeah that's why i was like what the hell on? is going on like i'm still like why is it what's going on what's going on and then she confronts astrid at her building and is like i want the clean room like i want the truth what's going on like so the only reason that she doesn't want to die now is to um confront astrid uh, and expose her and expose her for whatever this is going on because you know her boyfriend committed suicide uh and so they go into the clean room which literally they have to be cleaned yeah, before like they go in cleaned. so like washed hair scrubbed nails clipped labia removed uh labia, <laughs> like, labia piercing oh, I like, not Jesus. the whole labia <laughs> i know on the it was scrubbed you know i know oh, but <laughs> But um, and Wait, then they the soap they Go they ahead. suit up. Yeah, the soap was like some vinegary weird. Oh, but didn't it say like clean room on the soap? Yeah, the I think soap I think itself it had um, uh, urea in it. It was based off of uh, urine from animals. And I no think no that no that, that was that was Astrid's perfume. perfume. I'm sorry, white yeah. mist. Perfume. But I think that the there was a part of that. The point of that is that it helps to keep her safe from whatever's trying yes. to get there. There's got to be some kind of like. I feel like I agree with you on that right. because he's like you know it was originally made from the urine of animals right. you know and now it's synthetic blah blah blah. I was when I when we read this and we saw the oh the, it just says soap on it when we <laughs> saw the sky buster or a cloud buster as they called it I yeah. thought I, I thought okay this is no longer demons this has got to be some kind of alien thing. Right. It was so, so phallic too, by the right. way. Oh, like yeah. I'm just <laughs> dick. But big I, I was, iron cack. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking about that and like the whole alien thing, it like that it does it's not possible because the demon that comes back to talk to the the head um can't think of her name now, not Astrid, but um not Astrid. What Oh uh vi, vi, uh K- Killian? Killian. Isn't nope. that her name? Killian's the the lesbian badass. Who's the what do you mean? The chick mm-hmm. that that one. That's Astrid. Okay. Yeah, Astrid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was so confused. You're like uh, the head chick, but uh, not Astrid. I'm yeah, like, the guy, that, the fly who, fishing who? guy. Yeah. When yeah he came, Mr. Like, Way. When he came back. Yeah, when he came back, he was like, uh, you know, that's why I ran you over with my car twice and blah, 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 blah. So, like, it's obviously not an alien thing. It's got to yeah. be a spiritual demon. Yeah, like, demon. Well, even he was saying, like, he, he, had a, he had a thing where he couldn't. So this guy comes into the clean room, and the clean room is like a way. So basically what it seems like in the cult is they flag people that come into this cult, unquote, unquote, of people that could possibly be possessed. Right. And that's what it seems like they're looking for, really. Yeah. So, or one people of the, that have had near death experiences that yeah. can see the other side. Mm-hmm. Although, so, Mr. Way hadn't, which I find interesting. But he Mr. got. Way, he was the counting guy, right? Yeah. 127 yeah. steps. Well, yeah, because he said when he was fly fishing, he saw. He saw the. He, and she so was basically, like, what did you see? What did you see? Their whole terminology and everything they do, it seems like they find ways to flag people that could possibly be. And then they bring them in the clean room mm. that have been flagged. Like, she even said, like, he was like a red level or something yeah. like that. So I'm guessing that that's like a high up. Like, this yeah. person is probably either can see something or is possessed. Yeah. And they bring him in. And then, like, he even said, like, he only steps on the floor 171 times a day. Because well, he's stepping on the faces of 171. angels. It was, it was in the 170s. God. 171. No. I know it. No. 127. 171. 127. So she's looking it up. But um, he only steps on the floor so many times a day, which is 171. She's looking it up to confirm. Um, 127. <laughs> she's just saying it like she's found it. She's not even finding it. Um, but he, he only does that because he, he says that heaven is below. Right. And, the, and then she asks him, where is hell then? And he points up. Right. Yeah, because he's like, I can only step on uh, the angels' faces so much. Yeah. All right. I'm, they're I'm buried working. in the dirt. Oh, uh, here we oh go. wait. The white monkeys because he touched his wanker. Oh, that white monkey. The white monkey so that was. <laughs> I was sitting on the couch reading it, and I, I peeked over at Sam, and I was like, hey, look at this. And it was the one with the white monkey just like on the front of it. She was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're welcome. Now we're both looking. God damn it. 171. <laughs> How is it that you argued with him and then me also when you were just outnumbered? I know. Uh, she was convinced. Yeah. 
But uh, uh, apparently, I was wrong. So yeah, like the, this whole thing, and it, it wraps up at the end. Walking with the cloud on the buster. screening faces of angels. That was such yeah. an epic line. I love you, Kelsey. <laughs> so so he uh, it wraps up with the cloudbuster point of the clouds and the surgeon, which we don't know. Maybe he's like the baddest of bass demons. I don't know, or maybe he's something else. I think he's a collector. The collector. Okay. Uh, I feel like he's, uh, cause he kills her friend. Um, well, her husband's friend. Right? Well, yeah, her husband's makes friend. Makes him into a knot. Because, um, you know, he got out basically yeah. and was like hiding and, um. He was clean too. He wasn't a druggie. Right. Well, yeah. they made it so the drugs would no longer affect him. So like he was stuck hearing voices and. Yep. Yeah. He was stuck seeing everything right. that can be seen which again i think he's a collector i think that they're trying to cover their tracks so that when they're able to come in there's no one to stop them yeah and if we know that they exist we can prepare yeah I don't know. and i think he I pulled like it theory. out of the hand pulled that cut out? on the palm yeah i think he pulled his soul scalpel? out of his hand oh shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see then, this is why you read trades with us <laughs> and then yeah the, uh, this is the way the my twisted brain works. pretzel so, picture yeah that's well. why i always want you to read i'm like read this because i want to see what you think of yeah. it yeah uh, excuse me. I apologize. I just burped. Um, I will say the art in this John um, Davis Hunt. Oh, so good. Yeah this this whole it's really clean the art and it's uh. and then the the uh like single images where it's like her where like the pink one is whispering into her like ear. the double exposure type stuff yeah, yeah like the um I this is one of my favorite yeah. like that. This one right here. Oh, on video. God, I saw. Yeah, yeah my, you'll, my, you'll my see it right then. It's the white monkey. Yeah, yeah. the monkey one. It's so that gnarly. was. <laughs> so yeah, John John Davis Hunt like killed it on this book. Like oh, yeah. the, the art this is so is just... incredibly clean. Oh, and like the splash gorgeous. pages, like we're showing off on some of them, where it's just like a full page of art. It's just so it's so detailed, yeah. and it's just like it's it's one of my favorite like art styles right now. Like I really enjoyed this book just for like even thumbing through it just to look at the art. Was just like oh, I yeah. I totally agree with you. I think that um, as a whole, visually and um, like written word, <laughs> yeah. So so <laughs> as a takeaway for me, if you read this book, you will leave a little fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> like you will. It will like break said, your soul just a slight, bit. just just a little bit. But, <laughs> but it makes worth you. It. it really does make you think. Like I walked away from the book and like I read it late at night, which was a fucking mistake. I read it at like <laughs> ten o'clock at night the first time I read it. And then of course I'm sitting on the couch and I wasn't it wasn't like it's not a horror book. It's not necessarily terrifying. It's just it messes with your head. It makes oh, yeah. you think. It makes it's a you think fun, a lot. For sure. So I'm sitting on the couch at like ten thirty at night, just like all these things are starting to like unfurl and I'm starting to like get a lot of what was happening, what was going on, and I'm just like, Jesus, this is deep. Like there's so much stuff in there. And you you start to grasp why Philip killed himself. Like he knew all this information and he had to cope with it. And there was the part where can fade it out so like sparks showed her why he killed himself right. and she got to see like all the scenes of how he got to that point and we, we, we find out that like he became a level five and you get this little thumb drive from astrid and she kind of started unveiling like unraveling the whole world like this is yeah. how the world is there's demons yeah this is the real world us. and then it like started to fade out and then it showed panels of him still watching it and he started crying like on the third panel, I'm like, it was just too what much the him. fuck is happening? I was like, I want to know what pushed him over that point. Yep. And then, and then he that, grabbed the gun and he was like, I can't, I didn't want to know. Yeah. Uh, I will. Where was it? I think that this is one of those books while she looks for this, that this is one of those books that even if it wouldn't have been a comic book, this could have been an actual novel. Oh yeah. That would have done very, very well because I'm not, you know, I'm not super into comics like you guys are. And I thoroughly enjoyed this, but I love reading books. I like the, the takeaway from getting me out of my everyday existence and being Mm -hmm. able to just immerse myself in a world that my brain creates and the way that this is written, you can totally do that. Cause I, I went and read the entire thing and then thumbed through and looked at the pictures afterwards because I can't do like you guys do where I read a box, look at the box, read the next box, look at the box. Uh, No. Uh, when I read a comic, I do read it as a whole. Like I read it like a book, you know what I mean? Like the pictures are there, but I read it, you know, left to right, top to bottom. And, and then I'll take the whole thing in. And that's what actually took me so long is after I read it, I looked back through it a couple of things and was mm-hmm. like, oh, I also want to point out that I love the fade out 
in the word bubbles. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of. Where, and you, you could get that sense that that fade out was from him just being overwhelmed. Yeah, and that happened like two or three times in the book, and I was like, oh, that's all. like that fade out of words. Like well, you're it, just it like fades out and it makes silence. you it makes yeah. you like focus on the art because you see like his facial expressions tell the entire story yeah. from that point on. Yeah, but I still want to know what made those what, facial expressions yeah. happen. And it just, I think we'll yeah. see that in the next trade. Oh, I'm sure we They've will. They've got to delve deeper into that. Oh, it, yeah. I, and I'm sure it will. And I think since it's out that um, it, we need to buy that yesterday. Yeah, I'm gonna so, <laughs> I'm gonna probably pick up number two because I just I want to know. Uh, I, yeah, I am. I am. And, this is definitely on my to read list. Yeah. So I, um, I think out of all of us, that this is like a must read. Oh you, yeah. yeah. If For you sure. enjoy like deep thinking and anything to do with like angels and demons or even just a good story, this like a well written like unraveling story, this yeah. is something you need to read. Um, I personally, uh, and that love is love. Uh, Gail Simone was going to be in there, right? Yep. Oh, God damn it. Gonna... Yeah, there's, there's a thing at Megacon that's called Love is Love, and it's $150 to get in, and it's Friday night, and it has like a whole bunch of creators. It's for Pulse. It's a donation, and it's actually yeah. a tax write-off donation. Um, yeah. And you go in, and they have all these creators there, and it's like a like a hors d'oeuvres and drinks. Out? I don't know. We can check here in a second. Yeah. I, they, I've got all those credits back on my cards besides the inertia board. So, um, so yeah, I would love they, they had that, and uh, to know. there's like a head sketch and stuff like that. It's all kinds of cool stuff. Um, you know, I always wonder. Like, I know that they think of stories. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a writer. I'm an artist. I don't. I yeah, don't yeah. tend to uh, write. And when I do, I'm like a poetry writer. So like, I write single, quick things. Mm-hmm. And I would love to know, like, does she have this whole story? You she's, know what I mean? She's actually super, 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 super nice. Yeah. I met her last year and she signed my Batgirl. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. We you were, were waiting yeah. for the, you were waiting for Adam Hughes and then yeah. I met her afterwards and got Batgirl signed. So I have both of them sign it. But she's just like so incredibly nice. I bet you, even if we can't get into the love is love and it's sold out, if you go to her in the show and you, yeah. and you catch her, she will talk to you. Like oh. she is that type of person and she yeah. is really cool. There, there are a lot of comic book creators like that. And ironically, if you look at the cover, who's the quote? Where? Oh, I did. I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder wrote the quote on the front of this book. So I was yeah. like, and ironically, I did not know that before we reviewed it. I got it. And I read it, and I was like, well, I'm gonna like it. Like, yeah, yeah, like damn Scott it. Snyder Scott likes Snyder, it. Snyder likes it. I love I'm his gonna work, like it. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, I think we, I think you need to go pick this up if you're listening. If you yeah. haven't read this, go read this. You'll please, enjoy it. Please do, because um, you will. I, th- I, I enjoyed it. I would be surprised. And if you get it and you don't enjoy it, please tell me why. Yeah, like, tell us why. Because I would see love it. to know. You know, because I know that some of the, like some comics aren't for everybody. Yeah. Like, there's some comics I just don't care to read. Like, they're just not my, you know. Not, not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. So, speaking but, of cup of tea, crack cup of tea. Crack, yes, crack, cup, he, yeah. crack. The crack. The crack. I don't choose my reason. rooks because they're invulnerable. <laughs> it's so deep. The story I did, is so I did so like the, the chess references too. Yeah, the rook and then the the upside down rook, which is like the warzak or roar. It's like wizard W. Rook. It was wizard. Oh, I can't remember. God, it, was no, wizard. It, got, it wasn't wizard. It was like it was Warzig. Or, it, was, it was like Warzig wa- or something. Wa- we're yeah. going gonna, we're gonna to <laughs> argue this shit. But anyways, Son of a bitch. at the end, another thing that happens is when they uh, when she kind of like meets up with Astrid again, Chloe, they, they're talking and she's like, I, I can give up a rook, but I'm not going to give up a queen. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and that's because she can see and she knows that she can see, which is why like when she sees in the room, she's like, what did you just see? Like she knows she yeah, saw yeah. it. So... You know, she knows she's a seer, and I'm yeah, I'm curious to see where it's gonna go. Oh man, now I'm gonna have to look for it too. But um, so I think uh, next week we're obviously not gonna have a podcast because we're gonna be at uh, MegaCon. There will be but content on YouTube, Warzier. though. Yeah, Warzier. Of- Warzier. Uh, uh We will be having yeah, there'll a be lot. tons of content. Yeah, but we're just probably not gonna have a podcast because we're gonna be busy making tons of content. Yeah. Uh, It'll so be fun. Um, I think after MegaCon we'll pick up and do our normal podcast again. I think we might keep the format that we're gonna do this week because we'll see how it goes. But I, I already like the thought of I it. I do too. Yeah. Um, so I think next week we'll try the next issue. We'll try to do Clean Room too, so we can just follow up on it because yeah. I think it's fresh and we can kind of read the second one and then when the third one comes out we can pick that up, which is like in June I think. Okay. Um, July 18th actually. So Oot. pretty close. Um, but yeah, so moving on for comics, we have one big piece of news and it's the Doomsday Clock DC Rebirth stories. Um, so the button wrapped up last week yes. with Flash 22 and I was disappointed. Oh. Again? Yeah, I was disappointed. Really? You've been hyped over this. I was Is that really why excited. you're disappointed? Yeah, it, it was so... <sighs> too much build up? Uh, too much build up, no answers. So yeah. what happened was, uh, spoilers obviously if you haven't read it, but if you haven't read it then I mean... 
I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, then you're probably <laughs> it's, not going to It's pretty to big answer. in the DC world, so if you care about the DC world, you probably read it. Uh, but anyways, so the button for number four, Flash 22, came out, and um, they ended up you know, catching up with Reverse Flash, and he ended up getting ahead of them, and then Jay Garrick, original Flash, came out of the Speed Force and saved them, because as they're going through the Speed Force, the Cosmic Treadmill starts to fall apart again. Um, so he comes out and he saves him, a la Wally from DC Rebirth. So he's apparently, Jay Garrick is stuck in the Speed Force as well, just like Wally was at the beginning of DC Rebirth. And he needs somebody to remember him. He needs somebody to say his name so they can pull him like a lightning rod. He can yeah. be the ground. Um, so he's trying to get Barry to remember him. And Barry can't remember him. So he just gets sucked back into the Speed Force. So we see Jay Garrick and then he's fucking gone, gone again, again. Which doesn't, I mean, he's going to be back. Obviously, they've already... They've already shown us that he's going to be back just by showing that he's in the comic. Um, but then we go and we see um, Reverse Flash confronting Dr. Manhattan. Doesn't show Dr. Manhattan, but everybody fucking knows it's Dr. Manhattan. Blue, blue goo. Yeah. So everybody knows that's who it is. And then he ends up like talking to him and he's like, oh, I didn't know you're gone. And fries him. Yeah. And then, which is exactly what we knew happened in the first issue. And then, um, of course, now they end up back in the cave when Jay Garrick brought, him back, brought them back from the Speed Force. So they end up back at the beginning again. And they're back in the cave with dead reverse flash. And then they are, of course, you know, they go through and they talk about it and they're trying to figure it out. They're both detectives. So they still don't know who the fuck did this. <laughs> we know because we all know who it is. Um, but they, they kind of talk about it. And it's, I mean, it's great characterization, great writing. Um, they're exactly who you expect them to be Batman and, you know, the flash or the detectives through and through. And it's great writing. But. We don't find anything out. So, like, it goes through, and then it finally hits the part of the issue where Batman starts to reflect on what his father said. And there's a scene where it's like, I believe it's actually a nine-page panel, um, all the Watchmen. But he's sitting in in front of, like, the window, and he's sitting there thinking about what his father said. And the bat signal comes up in the background, and Alfred comes in and goes, are you going to answer that? And he just looks down at the floor and doesn't answer it. But we don't know. He could have answered it in a couple seconds later, but whatever. You, right, get, right. you get the thought process going behind it. Um, and then at the end, it shows Dr. Manhattan touching the button. Picks it up. You know, whatever. Great. Woo. We finally <laughs> confirmed what we already knew. Yeah. And uh, Because of the fucking button. <laughs> yeah. And then there was, um, there was a line of dialogue from the Watchmen about, uh, gosh, if you ever watched the movies or if you've seen, if you read the comic at the end where he talks about, um, you know, we're all puppets. I can just see the strings. So like everything is preordained. Everything I'm going to say has already been determined. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all puppets. There's I'm no different from you. This is what Dr. Manhattan says. I can just see the strings. So and then and, and then it ends. And then there's an epilogue where you see the teaser for Doomsday Clock, which is coming out November 2017, which kind of pisses me off because it feels like the button was just a fucking advertising campaign for Doomsday Clock. <sighs> so and don't get me Shame wrong on you. Yeah. Don't get you me know? wrong. I'm super excited for Doomsday Clock. It's going to be written by Jeff Johns, who is like. Oh man, he's one of the best writers. He wrote Rebirth. Oh yeah, he did um, Flash Rebirth. He did Green Lantern Rebirth. Dara, he he does a lot of really good comics. So I'm excited to see him write again. Yeah. Um, the last time he wrote was for Justice League in New Fifty Two, which was an amazing story. Um, and the art's going to be by Gary Frank and Brad Anderson, and it's it's going to be awesome. But it doesn't come out till November. So here we are. In May, our fucking dick in our hands. Yeah, and we have no answers. Bra, bra, bra. But again, like, I can't even. <laughs> I'm not mad at the creators that worked on this, like Joshua Williamson and oh man, who did art? Terrible. I'm about to find out really quick. Um, but the the creators were great. Like the book was amazing. The art, oh god, great. And, um, but I'm sure, and yes, because uh, you know I did get it. Um, but <sighs> so so the so the story is written beautifully. The script, yeah, the script, mind you. Um, and the storyline was probably like there the story yeah so this is what you have to do exactly so they don't i don't think they had a choice like yeah. joshua williamson was gonna howard porter that was it um so joshua williamson howard porter high five they all did co uh, pencils and colors all of it's done beautifully it looks great amazing yeah but they didn't i don't think they had say in what the story was going to go towards yeah they how just it ended they just there, yeah which is fine i mean i get that so I, it's hard for me to review stuff like that because I don't want to crap on the writers and the people who do the art, you know, Howard Porter. Because they did a, they did a, a phenomenal job. job. Yeah. I mean, I, I gave overall on the site, I gave this, a, I think it was like a 7.5 or a 6.5, somewhere around there. But the only reason why was because I broke it into three categories where I had, you know, story, script, 
and art. Yeah. And I gave script and art really high marks because they were really good. The script was great. Like there was a lot of dialogue between Reverse Flash and Flash, the dialogue between Flash and Batman, all written great. Mm-hmm. Like ex- exactly what you would expect, reminding me like why I love Reverse Flash as a villain and the way right. he treats Barry. Like I like that stuff and he was really well done. But the story, the fucking story <laughs> Which he had no control over. I get that. It was Jeff Johns and all the editor, uh, all the, the the editors and stuff like that are saying this is what we need to do because this is the narrative that we're going for. Yeah. So it, you know they're kind of getting they kind of get shot for that one, but it, it is what it is. You know, it it was a good story. It just was unfortunately not what I think most people were expecting from the button. Yeah. A lot of people were happy though. I mean, there's a lot of people like, oh, we we found out it was Doctor Manhattan, and I'm like, we kind of yeah, knew but that. But everybody, I feel like, yeah, everybody. <sighs> well, everybody that knew should have known it going in. Yeah, I mean, so, it was like, of course, you had the pin, and then like all the blue flashes when people die. It's like, yeah. come on, we know who this is. Yeah. So, well, and again, you can't hold them at fault for a storyline that you know the company was pushing. So, yeah. Um, oh, I, I think ultimately it'll pay off. Yeah. And in like a year, you'll be able to read this from from beginning to end right away, and it'll be amazing. Yeah. But now it kind of stinks because you know we're already a year into rebirth, and we still don't know how this all happened. And yet. And now we're going to November. Just November. November <laughs> is probably the answer, and it it'll be something that Chris might want to read actually because it's going to be essentially Doctor Manhattan versus Superman. Yeah. <laughs> so so it, it'll be it'll be interesting it sounds like a lot of fun but again i am upset about the button just because it should have of how hoping it for out. more yeah. yeah but it did give us four really cool lenticular covers which yeah. i have all of so oh, nice those were awesome but um so that'll be november 2017 i do have an extra one maybe we could do a giveaway yeah we could i have, huh. I have an extra number one as well yeah me too 21 mm-hmm. yeah so I have, I have an extra one of those we could probably we can get tom king to sign it and do a Ooh, giveaway yeah. yeah there we go because he actually wrote that um so to wrap up this one we're gonna do a quick pick of the week or picks of the week from what's coming out this mm-hmm. upcoming wednesday which will be well, yeah, when you listen to this will be monday so this upcoming wednesday um come on you challenge number five been amazing so far rotating artists and creators and then each creator leaves like a cliffhanger for the next team to figure out nice so it's a really cool thing um it was uh kirby jack kirby who created commandi so it's like this kind of weird sci-fi futuristic world and you know he's he's on like almost like a planet of the apes type feel and they create these cliffhangers at the end and the next team is like good luck have fun figure this one out Meh. so it's kind of like a cool little cool thing to read um wonder woman number 23 wrapping up <laughs> the truth so kind of finalizing out Wonder Woman's uh, origin story and closing up Greg Greco's run. There's two more issues left. I'm sad. <laughs> um, Batman in the Shadow, number two, written by Scott Snyder, Steve Orlando, and, um, oh, God, who does the art? I'm fucking terrible with the art right now. Um, really great book so far. Number one is pretty awesome. Made some pretty big changes and possibly some of Batman's lore to do with mm-hmm. the Shadow. So we pick that up and figure out what's going on with that. Redneck, number two. Yep. Which is by Donnie Cates, which is uh, Louisiana redneck vampires. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, Underwinter number three, which Sean, who's not here, is a huge fan of. It's a horror book uh, released by Image, and he's been loving this book so far. So if you're a horror fan, Underwinter number three, you want to pick up. And then uh, Exo Man of War number three from Valiant, which I have been reading because they just launched it again. It's actually a really good jumping on point if you've never read Exo Man of War before. So if you haven't, go pick up number one and two and get number three. The art is phenomenal. The story is really good too, but man, the art is ridiculous. So good. Hmm. Um, so that will wrap up this week for the comic edition. I think we should end this like we normally do and reset the cameras, then do Destiny, then do Game of Thrones. Okay. So thanks for listening to the comic edition. Go check out our other two that we have on the podcast. Check out our website, poppincomics.com, on Twitter, Poppin Comics, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, all that great jazz. So we'll catch you again next week. I'm Tim. I'm Kaz. And I'm Lena. And her head was about to explode. It was. <laughs> Bitch.